Imagine living into your elder years at a healthy weight with the energy to enjoy life to the fullest. But for those living with diabetes, obtaining healthy longevity becomes more difficult, but not impossible. Thanks to new discoveries in modern medicine, scientists are discovering new ways to promote longer life with diabetes. It's been known since the 1930s that you give an animal less calories, it lives longer. But there's really no consensus yet as to why that works. And our real goal is to understand that at the molecular level to the point where we can design drugs to maybe mimic some of those benefits, where now you no longer have to you know, spend all day calculating how to get enough nutrients without getting too many calories and really prolonging the amount of uh, healthy life that an individual gets. What if there was a way to increase the likelihood of living a longer, happier lifestyle with diabetes? We'll explore these possibilities on this edition of Lab TV News Diabetes. Today, we are in the lab of Dr. Joe Bauer at the Institute for Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism at the University of Pennsylvania. He and his team are exploring ways in which the body can naturally burn or restrict calories using a method called beijing. Beijing, what it describes is these cells that seem to be an intermediate between white fat and brown fat. So white fat's the classic fat that you think of, sort of an energy storage organ. Brown fat are these separate type of adipocytes that contain more mitochondria, smaller lipid droplets, and really have the function of generating heat. These brown fat cells are packed with mitochondria and are associated with lower body weight. Brown-like fat cells, called beige cells, or adipocytes, also appear within white fat deposits and are naturally stimulated into action by cold temperature to burn fat. The research that we're interested here in the Bauer lab is to figure out the role of the mTORC signaling pathway in metabolism. So my specific project within um, underneath this big focus is to study and understand the signals that regulate the function and the formation of this novel type of fat called brown fat. If you understand how these cells are formed and how they function, you can develop a novel therapy for obesity or diabetes. The primary tool used by Dr. Bauer's lab is a recently discovered drug called rapamycin, a drug that inhibits the protein mTOR, or the mechanistic target of rapamycin. This particular project was, uh, was driven by reports that rapamycin extends lifespan. So there's been this search for, for a long time by us and others for things, ways to really successfully mimic calorie restriction and get some of those both health benefits and lifespan benefits. And one of the big success stories to date has been this drug rapamycin that, that ends up extending life almost as much as calorie restriction. So you've almost met that goal of finding a drug that can mimic the longevity benefit. But at the same time, rapamycin really does some things that seem pretty detrimental for health. It raises cholesterol, it raises um, serum triglyceride levels, it increases the, uh, the chances of going on to develop diabetes in humans. And so there's been this, you know, this push and pull of, you know, okay, we found a you know, longevity drug that could make everyone healthier and live longer, and at the same time, it's you know, clearly going to do some things in humans that you would predict would shorten lifespan. And so we've been really fascinated with trying to tease that apart and understand wh where are the good effects coming from, where are the bad effects coming from, what exactly does this drug do? And, and can we now find a way to pluck out the benefits without all these harmful side effects. Their work suggests that the activation of the mTOR pathway may play a role in the Beijing process to help lower blood sugar and reduce calories. Could this be the safe solution Dr. Bauer is looking for to avoid the negative effects of rapamycin? We went into the lab to find out. What we do in order to gauge whether a signaling pathway is involved in beige fat formation is that we can culture the cells in a dish and we can give them the stimuli to start this browning process. We can then collect the RNA and see if different transcripts are increased that reflects that these cells have progressed down that path. We can see if certain signaling pathways are involved by giving an inhibitor. And if you don't see that same increase in the transcript, then we know that whatever pathway we have inhibited is the one that's involved. So yeah, I think the experiment, uh, our mouse model is really working because we can see that the AKT473 is really lighting up in the wild type mice as we expect, but then in the knockout mice, the signal is completely gone. So we can be sure that it's knocked out in the fat. Excellent. Could these investigations shed light on the Beijing process? Dr. Bauer recently published a study that showed his findings. So what we really uh, were able to show in this paper was that 
mTOR signaling is critical to the Beijing response in adipose tissue. And so that really wasn't known before. This is a complex that's very well studied in other contexts. So in cancer research, mTOR has been very well known for a long time, but nobody really realized that you needed this complex to get Beijing. And so in the terms of uh, obesity and diabetes, we now realize that inhibiting mTOR might actually be a bad thing. You, you want to get this Beijing response. You'd like the extra metabolic capacity from these Beijing adipocytes that would form. Um, and so now that we know that we're blocking them, it opens up a number of things. We can try to understand the downstream pathways, maybe have drugs that are more specific that can promote Beijing and maybe restore these cells. And we certainly know when we treat people with rapamycin, which is you know now actually well, not just being considered anymore, it's no longer theoretical. There are healthy people being treated with rapamycin to see uh, whether it's able to stave off age-related diseases. Now we now know one of the complications of that may be that they don't have Beijing adipocytes that are forming normally. And so one of the things we may need to do to correct the, the metabolic state of those people is, is uh, try to restore these beige cells. And so we're really excited to try to design targeted drugs that, that get us the parts we like and, and eliminate the parts we don't. So just how has the Bauer Lab come to this point? We were able to get the result today with a lot of hard work. It was a lot of experiments in all these different settings that basically confirmed our same hypothesis. So we asked, is this signaling pathway involved in making brown fat? And through cell culture work, through looking at histological slides and kind of compiling all this data together and analyzing it, we were able to come to the conclusion that this one specific signaling pathway is very important in the formation of brown fat. This is surely exciting news that could have a positive impact, and their hope is to begin clinical trials on humans as soon as possible. So what hope can those living with diabetes gain from this? And how close is Dr. Bauer to coming up with possible therapies? I think there are a lot of, uh, you know, of therapies that are getting closer now and, and that, that really people should be very optimistic at this time about the, you know, the, the chances of treating you know, diabetes and obesity and, and many different age-related diseases. I really do think that this brown fat field in general is progressing pretty quickly. There are a ton of labs and a ton of companies interested in really um, understanding the molecular uh, underworkings of this, this tissue so that we can learn how to activate it um, in patients to treat obesity and and other metabolic disease that's really uh, epidemic in our society, as you know. Congratulations to Dr. Bauer, Dr. Tran, and the rest of his team. We wish you continued success. I think there's a great reason to be to have hope at this point and to think that it is possible. It's not, it's not something we'll never get to. <laughs>